so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of my head, therefore my heart faileth me. Growing, growing in grace and impact in the ministry. We need courage. We need zeal. We need to revive our first love. Old law. Act in my life. Act in my life. The courage I've lost. I want to regain it. All you have lost. All the fields you have lost. I want to reconquer them. Commit yourself and pray unto the Lord. Pray, let's pray. Evils and difficulties. Difficulties and obstacles. As you leave this conference, all those things will quit your way. In Jesus' name we pray. We'll talk to the Lord. May the vision come back. Without vision, the people will perish. Oh, Lord, oh Almighty God, who is blind if not my servant have sinned, Lord, open my spiritual eyes. Give me secrets for my ministry. Open your mouth and pray unto the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. One thing is to see vision and another thing is to understand. And the angel asked Daniel, do you understand a vision? He said, how can I understand? And the Lord touched him. And he understood what he was supposed to do for his nation. Oh, Lord God. Give us the understanding of the vision. Vision of our time. Let's open our mouths and pray. We need intelligence to understand vision. Let's open our mouths and pray. God sent his servant to reveal him uh, all all the vision he has put upon for, in him for our nations. Do we understand this vision? Do we understand what it means? Do we understand what God is saying through him? Oh, 
Oh Dieu. Oh God. Oh Dieu. Oh God. I want to understand the vision. C'est dans la compréhension qu'il y aura l'exécution. It is through understanding that there will be execution. It is through uh, understanding that there will be commitment. When you are understood, you will commit yourself. You will be the eye to the blind. You will be the eye to the blind. And God will give you the blessings of the people. People will seek to listen to what you are saying. Because you understood the vision. And you can well explain it to them. Lord, let me understand the vision. In Jesus' name we pray. In Job 29, verse 12. Because I delivered the poor that cried and the fatherless and him that had none to help him. The blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness, and it clothed me. My judgment was a robe and a diadem. I was eyes to the blind, and feet I to the, to the lame was a father to the poor. The cause which I knew not, I searched out and break the jaws of the wicked and plucked and plucked the spoil out of his teeth. Hallelujah. There is a battle, brethren. Battle between the righteousness and unrighteousness. A battle between uh, misery and uh, uh, happiness. And we are in between this battle. Lord, make me a blessing for my people. Reveal uh, me righteousness. So that I can be able to help my people. Let's open our mouth and pray. Job says, Job says, Job says, I was a blessing to him that was uh, ready to perish. I was delivering the, those who are ready to perish. I was the eye to the blind. Feed for the lamb. Lord, make me another job. In my nation. In my region. Wherever I am. Open your mouth and pray. Only the Spirit of God can do that. Only the Spirit of God can do that. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your servant. Thank you for all those who are here today. I pray, oh Lord, the vision you've given to your servant, help us to understand it. Help us to be a blessing to our people. That after this conference, our nations will change in Jesus' name. Let revival and glory cover our nations in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you have heard our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Ansida.
Ta grâce l'a rendu possible pour nous. To be here in the right place before you. D'être ici au bon endroit devant toi. At the right time for you. Au bon moment pour toi. For the right thing from you. Pour l'objectif noble. We ask, O oh God. That the right thing each and every one of us is before you here will not pass any of us by. As we begin this morning, take control. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. God bless you. It's time for worship section. Hallelujah. The Bible says true worshipers must worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. From Cameroon to the rest of the world, we call you all to rise up on your feet this morning as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Just raise up your hands up to the heavens as we worship the Lord. Raise up your hands. The Bible says true worshipers, we need to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Sing with me, sing with me, how great 
Amen. You can sit down. God bless you. Amen. This morning again, our daddy in the Lord, the convener of this minister's conference, is so delighted to see all of us being here this morning. Ce matin, notre papa dans le Seigneur, le pasteur hôte de cette conférence des ministres de culte, est content de nous voir présent ici. His greetings and thanks for our being here this morning goes most especially to our dignitaries that are here today. Et salut spécialement les dignitaires qui sont présents ici. So for us to cheer them up and welcome them, can they just rise up this morning? Thank you this morning. Thank you very much. All our dignitaries, can you just stand up? Okay. Amen. Amen. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. Today is a great day. Great things are packaged by the Lord for each and every one of us. It's now time for us to go, I mean, to sing our congregational song. We shall rise up as we sing together. We are singing the song, Fill My Cup, Lord. Like the woman at the well, I was sinking for things that could not satisfy. And then I heard my Savior speaking, 
Draw from my well that never shall run dry. There are millions in this world who are seeking for pleasures, earthly good afford, but none can match the wondrous treasure that I find in Jesus Christ, my Lord. So, my brother, if the things that this world gives you leave hungers that won't pass away, my blessed Lord will come and save you if you kneel to him and humbly pray. I lift, fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up. Come and quench this thirsting soul of, this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole.
God bless you. You can sit down. Call on the choir to come up now.
Bless the Lord. Ministers of God, this is a rare privilege that a man called anointed by God whom from the time he was a child they gave him the name William. Defender of the faith. Evidence to that is that he had stood for the faith. He had preached the faith and defended the faith for more than 50 years. We are privileged in Africa to have him in Cameroon. Join me to welcome to the podium Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi. You are welcome, sir. Thank you, Pastor. Everybody praise the Lord. I am not alone. You are with me. You have become the defenders of the faith. Whatever is in that name, William. I pass it on to you. Before we go on, if you write that name, William, write that. Are you ready to go? The first word, W-I-L-L, -L, wheel. The next word, I. And the next part, A-M. Wheel, I am. You must have a wheel. Your personality, your life, the I must have a will. Every day you wake up, you are tired, you are weak, you are fatigued. You say, no, I am will. Will I am. You are running. And something comes before you. That thing wants to stop you. you. Say, will I am. I'll go through this hurdle. You're doing something. You think you've done the best in your life. Somebody comes to you and he looks at what have you done after all. You have the tendency to be discouraged. They don't appreciate what I do. You wake up. That one, the I inside you, says, will I am. It is that by the power of the Spirit that makes you not to cringe, not to compromise, not to collapse when things are against you. And you remember, will I am. When you become 50, you become 60, you become 70, you become 80. By the grace of God, I'll be 83 just a few days' time. And your colleagues, your friends, they said, we have retired at 70. Why are you still running? Then you remember your will, I am. It is that will that keeps you running, Amen. that keeps you standing. Amen. Everything that God has given me, I'm ready to pour upon Cameroon. Yeah. 
If I don't finish now, I'll come back to you again. Raise, raise up your hand and let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Your good people are here. Your grace has made them good. Your grace has transformed their lives. And the Spirit of God is coming upon them in great power. Raise up your people here to do the work of God in this nation. Lord, I pray, tiredness will vanish away. Discouragement will vanish away. What the devil thought we could not do. Here in this land, Lord, raise up your people by your spirit. They will do it in Jesus' name. New power upon your life. New anointing upon your life. New purposefulness in your life. You will do what God has ordained, you will do in this land. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God has blessed you. You can sit down. Today we're still continue, we're continuing with impact. Great impact, greater impact in ministry. And a gracious uh, transformation that we have and the good path that will follow so that everything God says you will do. My brother, my sister, you will do. Today we're looking at growing impact in ministry through the Holy Spirit. Please, I don't want you to say, I have the Spirit already. I know many of our people, many people here, you have the Spirit of God. It is what you do with the Spirit that makes you have greater, growing impact in ministry. God told Moses, bring 70 people that you know, and I am going to put part of the Spirit on you, on them. And so Moses brought 70 elders, and the Lord put the Spirit on them. After that spirit came upon them, I'm searching and reading from that chapter of Numbers, what did they do? And I turn over the scriptures, Numbers 11, Numbers 12, Numbers 13, Numbers 14, Numbers 15, Numbers 16, and I can see the 70. What are they doing? It's not what you receive, it's what you do with what you receive. I see one man, Joshua, and God took the spirit of Moses and he put it into Joshua. And I look at Joshua 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 10, 24, and I see what Joshua did with the spirit he received. You receive the Holy Ghost. But what are you going to do with the spirit that you receive? Growing impact in ministry through the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. 
It says, and ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Those apostles received the Holy Ghost. They had been saved. Their names were written in heaven. They were sanctified. Jesus prayed, sanctify them through thy truth. That word is true. They were of one accord in one place. Then they were baptized in the Holy Ghost. Ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem. I see them in Jerusalem. And then it says in Judea. They're slowly going to Judea. And in Samaria. They didn't go to Samaria. Until the persecution came and drove them out. It's the spirit that should have led them to Samaria. But they didn't do that. They waited until persecution drove them to Samaria. And to the uttermost parts of the earth. I can't see them going to the uttermost part in chapter 3, chapter 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. They were just around there doing merry go round. You see power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then you move, or the Spirit moves you to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the other ones part of the earth. Acts chapter 19, verse 2. In Acts chapter 19, verse 2, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And Paul the Apostle got to Ephesus. They were cool and cold. He said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They were steadfast in doctrine, but they stayed pure. They did not go anywhere. And Paul said, you're not moving. You're not active. You're not evangelizing. You're just there. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They lived without fire. Without fervency. They were just normal, normal, regular people. Believers. Saved. Born again. But there's no drive. There's no passion. And what they did on Monday, they did on Tuesday. Every day was like every other day. And Paul the Apostle said, the way I look at you, you're good, you're neat, and you're stable, you're steadfast, but I can't see fire here. I can't see evangelism here. I can't see passion here. I cannot see a drive here. Tell me now, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? When people see us, when people observe us, when people look at what we are doing and what we are not doing, 
Lord, when sir. people see how we were systematic, but we were slow, we were systematic, but we were stagnant, we were systematic, but we are just there. And we're not moving anything, nothing is moving us. They must be asking us, tell me now, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? <laughs> What we do after we receive the Holy Spirit will tell the world that in reality we have received the Holy Spirit. Growing impact. You will have impact. Your country, you will have impact. Beyond your country, you will have impact. Look at me. I'm not a Cameroonian. I am a Nigerian. I have impact in my country, Nigeria. You will have impact in your country, Cameroon. I leave Nigeria. I come to Cameroon. I go to Togo. I go to Ghana. I go to many countries in Africa. I go to many countries outside Africa. Outside my country. I have impact. Outside your country. I said outside your country. If you don't have any passport, go and get passport. You will have impact outside your country. Growing impact in ministry through the Holy Spirit. Three things we're looking at. Number one, receive, resist not the Holy Spirit. If you're going to receive somebody, you're not resisting at the same time. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit is a person. Receive him. Resist not the Holy Spirit. Number two, raise, ruin not the harvested souls. The reason God gives us the Holy Spirit is so that we'll get to the harvest field. <coughs> and when we get to the harvest field, we are best souls into the kingdom. Raise a vested souls, ruin not a vested souls. Number three, renew, repress not the humble spirit. Your personality is renewed. When the Holy Ghost comes, and your passion, your consecration, your commitment are renewed when you have the Holy Ghost. Your drive, your passion, your purpose, your perseverance is renewed when you receive the Holy Ghost. Repress not the humble spirit. Look at number one. It says, receive, resist not the Holy Spirit. He wants us to receive. He doesn't want us to reject or to resist. Acts chapter 1 again, verse 8. But he shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. When the Holy Ghost comes, it doesn't make differentiation between men and women. Between the young and the old. 
everyone expecting will receive. You will receive. When the rain comes down from heaven, there's no discrimination. If you bring your bucket out, if you bring your drum out, the rain will come on your bucket, on your drum. And as the power of the Holy Ghost comes, are you available? I am available. The Holy Ghost will come upon you. And you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem. When Jesus went to heaven, those disciples locked themselves up in a room in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. It was upper room. Upper room did not take them up before the Holy Ghost came. The upper room did not take fear away from them before the Holy Ghost came. But it's when the Holy Spirit comes, fear will be taken away from you. If they heard that the Sanhedrin or the Pharisees or Sadducees were coming, they blocked the way, they locked the door. I don't want any of those uh, Pharisees to come and see me here, there'll be trouble. Before the Holy Ghost comes, you are afraid. You lock your door. I don't want to see that angry face. I don't want to see those frowning faces. You lock your door. When those religious leaders get up and they threaten you, you collapse. When the Holy Ghost comes, those doors in Jerusalem, you open your door, you come out. It's when the Holy Ghost comes. You see that man at the beautiful gate. <clears throat> and then you see silver and gold have I none. What I have, I give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Ye shall receive power. The power to move. The power to go everywhere. The power without any restriction. The power without the fear of man. The power for fire. He shall receive power. The power to keep on moving. The power to pray. The power to heal. The power to destroy the works of the devil. The power to be bold. The power to do and achieve. That's what you are receiving today. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Before the Holy Ghost comes, you close your mouth. <laughs> you know what to say. When you see people you need to talk to, fear will shut your mouth. You'll be thinking, I don't know how to talk. I'm a stammerer. I can't even talk to the people near me. What if I talk and they don't accept? When the Holy Ghost comes, something from inside will open your mouth. The wisdom of God will come out. The word of salvation will come out. And everywhere you go, you'll be witnesses unto him. Both in Jerusalem 
and in all Judea. Please understand the word of God. He didn't say first in Jerusalem, and when you finish everything in Jerusalem, then Judea. No, he said both in Jerusalem and in all Judea. You see, you'll be a man of all trade and master of everything. You know, some people say, we have not finished in Jerusalem. How can we go to Judea? And then go to Samaria. And then go to the uttermost part of the earth. Have you won? Have you evangelized everybody in Jerusalem? He said, when the power comes, you walk in Jerusalem, you're on to Judea, come back to Jerusalem, and then go to Samaria, come back to Jerusalem, because that's your headquarters. And then you go to the uttermost part of the earth. I see somebody there today, you will move out. You will rise up. And while you go everywhere, the power will keep on increasing. Because that's what he wants us to do. He wants us to receive. God gives. I receive. God gives. You receive. Acts chapter 2. We're reading from verse 38. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. It says, Then Peter said unto them, Peter, do you remember a few days ago? It's not up to even two months now. Because this is the 50th day after Jesus went to heaven. <clears throat> 50, 60 days ago. Less than two months ago. Are you one of them? No. I've never seen the man. I think you're a disciple of Jesus. No. I've never followed him. Two months ago. Today. Two months after, power has come. And Peter said unto them, he wasn't looking down. He wasn't cringing. He wasn't afraid. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, all fear will flee from your life. Where you are cringing, compromising before, you will stand in the power of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, and in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sin. And ye shall, here is the word again, receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 39. For the promise is unto you. Are you there? The promise is unto you. The promise is unto you. The promise is unto you. And to your children, the promise of power is unto you. The promise of confidence is unto you. The problem of fire, fire power, power fire. Everything cold in your life will become hot. Because the promise is unto you and to your children. 
and to all that are far off. Afar off. Afar off. When we talk afar off, like I'm standing here, the people in the front seat, they are far, but they're a little bit near. Those who are way at the back, they didn't even have seats in the in the place where we are. Afar off. And the promise will get to you there. Yeah. Here we are in the upper room in Jerusalem. Afar off. In Africa. Afar off. In Cameroon. Afar off. In all the nations of the world, the promise is unto you. I see you today being full of power, being full of fire. I see that God has been thinking about you, that he will give you power. He knew that this program will be at this time. <clears throat> he knew it will not be in January. He knew it will be in May. He knew that you will come. And he has been waiting for you. That the promise will be unto them that are far off. As many as the Lord our God shall call. Today, you will receive power. Amen. Now, when I receive power, I must do something that will show I've got the power. And I must avoid some things that will hinder the power, limit the power, quench the power. After receiving the power, he abandon not the spirit. You receive a visitor. You receive a guest. He has come in. He's sitting there in your sitting room. You leave him there. And you're going to be doing whatever you were doing before. You abandon the guest. When the Holy Ghost comes, he has entered. He came with power. He came with authority. He came with the might of heaven. Abandon not the spirit. B. Blaspheme not the spirit. You see those Pharisees? They said Jesus did what he did by Beelzebub. And Jesus warned them. Those who blaspheme against the spirit of God, there's no forgiveness. Abandon not the spirit. When you are going to evangelize, no, you are going with the power of the spirit. When you are going to preach, rely on the power of the spirit. When you are going to pray, you are praying for the sick. Because I believe that from this time on now, you will pray for the sick and the sick will recover. You know, uh, because we're in a crusade, and the people expect me to pray for the sick. If I called you, and I told you pray for the sick, the people will be unhappy. That's why I didn't call you to come and pray for the sick last night. But you know, we're having a conference somewhere. And I gave the word of God to the people. And I said, today, 
the healing will come through the people there. So I said, if you are sick, raise up your hand. I said, go to the person nearest to you. The sisters to the women. The brothers to the men. And I said, lay hands on them. And they laid hands on them. I said, pray for them. And they prayed for them. I say, say in Jesus' name I pray. They said, in Jesus' name I pray. I said, now check up yourself. If you are healed, come. Many, many people came. Today, you receive power. The power to heal. When you get back to your station, to your ministry, don't say, I wish Pastor Kumuyi were here today. You are there, Jesus is there. Yeah. You are there, the Holy Ghost is there. Yeah. Lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. Yeah. See, contradict not the spirit. Contradict not the spirit. The spirit says you can. When you say I cannot, that's contradiction. The spirit says, rise up and speak. You say I don't have the courage, that's contradiction. The spirit says, run, you will not be tired. I'm sorry, I cannot run. And the spirit says, now it's your turn. God will walk wonders through you. You say, I'm sorry, I don't feel like. Contradict not the spirit. What God says you can do, you can do. What God says you have, you have. Where the position was sitting in heavenly places with Christ. Where God says you are, that's where you are. D, despise not the spirit. Look at that brother there. He's short. He's slim. And his grammar is not very good. The Holy Ghost is not in the grammar. The Holy Ghost is in the heart. Don't despise that man. Because if you despise him because of grammar, you're despising the one that is walking through him. Look at that sister. That sister has some personal problems. And then she comes and she wants to do something. And you say, but I know the history and the story of this sister. And you look down on her. You are not despising her. You are despising who lives in her. Can I remind you of the story of Abraham and Abimelech? Abimelech had a challenge, a problem. Now the whole family barren. God shut up the wombs of everyone in the family of Abimelech. And God told Abimelech, go to Abraham. He is my prophet. He will pray for you. And barrenness will vanish away in your family. 
Give a good amen. amen. And here is Abraham going to pray for Abimelech because they are barren. Hold on. Abraham himself has not got the promised child. Sarah, barren. Abraham, no child. Abraham, no child. Go pray for Abimelech that has no child. <laughs> what if Abimelech said, Abraham, you come to pray for me. Give me your testimony first. Show me your miracle child first. And Abraham said, no child yet. And you want to pray for me? Abimelech dis did not despise Abraham. Abraham, you have no child. You want to pray for me? Let me kneel down. Despise not the Holy Spirit. You see, that is what makes us to move on in ministry. He now, it tells us, exchange not the spirit. That is the spirit of the world. There's the spirit of God. And now when you want to minister, don't exchange the Holy Spirit with the spirit of the world. If I do not forsake, prostrate the Holy Spirit. G, grieve not the Holy Spirit. You know, it's like you're, you're moving on. Is the doctor, is the giver, is the provider, is the nourisher, is the one that will bless your life. Don't grieve him. Anything you will do, anything you will say, that the Holy Ghost will be grieved and withdraw. Grieve not the Spirit of God. Harden not your heart against the Spirit. And intercede not without the Holy Spirit. You receive the Spirit. You embrace the Spirit. You love the Spirit. You're moving on in the Spirit. And you do not allow any separation between you and the Spirit of God. We're coming to point number two. Point number two, you raise, you do not ruin the harvested souls. You're a man of destiny. You're a woman of destiny. You came to this world to accomplish something. And the life you live every day is not for nothing. Your life will amount to something. And you are conscious of that every time. Look at Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 24. Neither say they in their heart. Let us now fear the Lord. Our God. That has given us rain. Both the former and the latter rain. In a season. He has given you opportunity in the right season. He has given you the calling in the right season. And then in the season, he reserves unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. 
He has reserved it for you. Why has that not pleased me, the evangelized? It's reserved for you. You didn't say amen to that? You know, a church is collapsing. It's scattering. People are leaving that church. And then the Spirit of God, now the Spirit of God will not come and talk physically. He may use your leader. He may use your overseer. He may use the senior pastor and say, you are going to get to that place. The church is collapsing there. Why didn't another person get there before you got there to revive that church? He has reserved unto you the appointed weeks of the harvest. Look at that person. She sick. Her husband is a pastor. And then they call you. Come and pray for this person. Uh, about her husband. Her husband is a preacher too. Let her husband go and pray for her. No. The Lord has reserved for you the appointed weeks of the harvest. No question. What will this man do? What will this woman do? Why me? Because God is giving you a special privilege. And he says, you are the one that will bring the glory to God in this situation. And when he reserves for you the appointed weeks of the harvest, and you take the opportunity, many good things will happen through you. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 5. Proverbs 10, verse 5. He that gathered in summer is a wise son. But he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causes shame. God has appointed you that this is what you will do. This is where you will go. I want to sleep. I, I'm tired. I want to rest. Other people of my age, they are resting and sleeping. Long time ago, they have retired. I want to retire. When God has given you the appointed weeks of the harvest, you will not sleep. You will not run away. You will stay at your post of duty. You will gather the harvest. You will keep the harvest. You will grow the harvest. Because that is what God has appointed for you to do. That village is waiting. Waiting for you. The community is waiting. Waiting for you. You will go, you will do, you will achieve, you will bring harvest into the kingdom. Look at John. John chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 35. John chapter 4, verse 35. Say not ye, there are yet four months. I can sleep now. There is still time. Don't say that. I can relax now and go sightseeing. There is still time. Don't say that. This is not the appropriate time for me to be jumping and running. Don't say that. Say not ye. There are yet four months and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, 
lift up your eyes and look on the fields on the fields plural plural you know, you know there are people that they just want to concentrate on this field I'm here. I've not even finished this one and they are there they are there uh, you see in the word of God there are multiple events and activities for you and for me look at Moses he was before Pharaoh look at him he was before the people of Israel look at Moses he was a leader in front of the people going before them Look at him, he's busy opening the Red Sea for them to pass on. Look at Moses helping Joshua to have victory on the battlefield. And look at that same Moses is bringing water out of the rock. God has not limited you, you will not be limited. <laughs> He has not restricted you. You will not be restricted. Look on the fields, plural. Be there, be there, be there. God will confirm the word in your mouth. He says they are white already to harvest. They're white already to harvest. And there are things we do, there are things we do not do. J, journey not without the Spirit. Paul and Silas and the team, they wanted to go to Bithynia, and the Spirit said, don't go there now, another time. Okay, keep nothing but by the spirit only. Whatever I cannot keep by the spirit is not worth keeping. Whatever I cannot hold without the spirit is not worth holding. But the standard of the word, the work he has given, the commission, the great commission he has given, will keep by the Holy Spirit. El lie not to the Spirit. Uh, here is Ananias. And it comes to Peter. You see, there are people that think God has set the number of years we we'll live. We cannot live further than that. They say 70 years. God has given uh, everyone to live. If he tries, maybe he gets to 80 years. First call after that. No more. But you know that psalm is the psalm of Moses. And Moses that spoke about 70, 80 years lived up to 120 years. If you have finished what God wants you to do in 70 years, 